Folks, welcome back. Sit back, relax. Let's do an actual box opening as I get back on track with everything. And today, we are just at the stepmom set, not aftermath stepsister. We are at the normal March the Machine, also known as the mom collectors. Patron over here, Franklin D. Franklin says, Rudy, I'm gonna get a serialized card in every box. I said, Franklin, if you get that, I'm deleting the video and I'm leaving the country. But seriously, if you just get a single one, I would like to see what it looks like because I have not seen a serial. Oh, that's right. Super hard. Oh my god. Rudy can't even open the packs. I forgot about these things. The insane Japanese level. Oh my god. I don't want to use a knife. Can we? Oh my god. All right. We're coming back to that pack. So we're going to talk about what's going on with the pricing in the market. And then we're going to talk about kind of the state of everything. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of turbulence, a lot of turmoil again. Um, negativity flowing. People are angry, dramatic, same old stuff. All right. Pack one. Ren. Or uh, first mythic. I'm going to see how many mythics we actually get here. Beautiful talent there. And um, legacy. Heliod. And holy smokes. is Did the price crash on this or is this still a pretty big thing? Uh, Pirate Monkey with foil and Kaladesh framework. That seems like a really good hit. Now, I don't know financially if the prices have just gone to nothing and I'm wrong at this point. Oh my god, I can... Alright, alright. I'm using a knife. I hate using a knife on booster packs. So, Pirate Monkey was a big deal. Obviously, if it's a serialized Pirate Monkey, it's worth probably worth a ton of money, but I don't even know if the regular is. I would assume the regular is still a thing. But, in this market, it's very tough to tell. Croxa! Mything number three. Scale Lord, freezing. Uh, that's a beautiful artwork there. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I kind of miss the Theros sets. I had a lot of fun with that. Holy smokes, last two on here. That is a wild elemental fox, and of course, another Ren and Realm Breaker. So we're at four mythics in the first few packs here. Uh, financially, March of the Machine, this set is holding up really well. Uh, supply side, as far as like even stores and distribution level of the collector boxes, is not high at all. Uh, some distributors are even limiting. If you want to buy more, you can only get a couple a week kind of thing. That, that The whole duplication thing is a weird thing with Wizards lately. Knight and a beautiful, gorgeous, gorgeous hit. This, is that the same unicorn from Jumpstart that was worth a lot? I don't know. So financially, it's been quite surprising to see a lot of these products hold up when a lot of people thought that they were just going to kind of collapse and kind of crash and burn with everything. And, oh, we got a nice little siege. It's actually a mythic siege, Invasion of Instron. So, are people accepting and excited about these sieges and the battles? Or are these battle cards kind of just starting to level off now? Like, I'm not really sure how that's holding up at this point. Terror. All right. Daxo. And another... God, that Kaladesh framework gets me every time, man. Kari Zev. And same thing with some of this Ikoria crazy artwork. It is beautiful. The multiverse thing, like I told you guys in my first box. So, this is one of my second box opening of this particular product. And I have to admit, it, it's a weird vibe of a box open. It does not remind me of opening any other magic product. It has a weird feel to it because of the multiverse of variants and kind of different cards. Like, look at this. It's just so weird to see, like, you're opening a pack of cards and it jumps like this. From, I mean, look at that. All the way to College Inventions to the Etched, all the way over here to a Mythic, and then we get a Coria comic book. Like, it's just so crazy how the swings are of that kind of thing. It's a very... Tough thing for an old fart like me to kind of mentally realize that this is how this type of product is. It's just, it's tough for me to wrap my brain around it. That's all, folks. And Bounty. And look at that. Vorklax. That's a, I would assume is a pretty good hit there. And I gotta admit, this, I guess, Siege foil or this weird stripey foiling is pretty neat. On certain cards, it adds to it. Like this one, I think it looks really good because it kind of gives like a space streak, like because it's a Theros kind of a space card. Some of the other ones, I don't know. It depends on the card, the art, and the style, and the colors on the card that I think kind of really distinguish how the card looks with that type of foiling. Does that make sense? Invasion Tree. Do what is the face on her? That she needs to see a doctor. Broken. Whoa. Golly, look at the wings on her. You know I'm a sucker for the hair too. But God, those wings are wild. Okay. We got a nice little Theros card. Valor. And talent coming in with the corpse burn. All right, see, like on this particular card, when you have kind of a mono piece of art, the etched type of foil, it makes it look faded. You know, it doesn't really, it just doesn't add a good vibe to that type of artwork and framework. Like, I feel like they should be more selective to make sure the card has good eye appeal. Like, look at that mountain. 
Like, I can't even tell if the artwork is really good or not, because it just looks very washed out. So, just saying. Alright, Warrior. Bright, oh, Bright Palm, so is that a, a commander? I'm not sure what that one is, but that is another mythic. A lot of flipping mythics, my goodness. And God, I still love that stained glass. I mean, see if for example, look at this, folks, look at this. So, regular foiling, you have the nice little rainbow, but look at this. On this particular type of framework, look at the foiling on the etched glass. It gives it a really neat, like, beams of light going through it. That's really beautiful. Breach the multiverse! And I, I would assume some of these are still holding up financially. They're pretty good. But again, when you film these pretty early, the market can shift on you really quick. But I do know, I don't know if that's a particular multiverse, but some of these things are actually selling and doing quite well in the singles market. And of course, people have another breach the multiverse. Wow. All right, so now we got the old streets of Barry Manilow. We got the little mafia framework there. Wave Knight, Eyes, Sleeper, and another mafia framework. And there you go, the engineer over here. So overall, I, I don't. I just feel like people don't seem. What's a good word to use on this right now? People are like the market's accepting the product and it's doing fine. But people don't seem overly excited and like wound up. I wouldn't say like FOMO or. Golly, like, that's so cool. I love the red and blue castles on that framework. Hey, Fangbear. Boy, that brings back memories. Is that the double poison counter guy? Yeah. And, um, oh, wait, I don't know how to play magic. Uh, complete the circuit. And beautiful. Like, God, that Judith looks gorgeous, man. Like, sometimes, to me, the eye appeal and the balance of the way your eye and looks and just the colors, the card just really just looks so well done, man. There are just times it's just gorgeous, man. Anyways. But that, that's, the, that's the feel I have right now. A little uh, Locust Man. Conqueror. Mascot. You got Urborg with a really cool piece of art there. And we got the old Keeper of the Flame. See, now this type of foiling looks really good on there because you have like fiery wave look. Very nice in the... I guess it's a Surge foil. We got the old uh, Morin Tassar. Don't remember that particular one, but that's another. And then we have, of course, another crazy Kaladesh looking style foil card. That is only a rare though. But my goodness, that's... So the, the other one was a mythic, right? Okay, so you can get different rarities of the multiverse framework. So I understand that correctly. Okay. It, it, it's a it's a wild thing, man. It really is. It's a weird thing. Helion. Butcher. Dance. Flynn. The, I remember Flynn. Is that Kaladesh? No, not Kaladesh. Kaldeheim. Kaldeheim, right? Into the fire. And a beautiful, beautiful Kentry spirit. So again, on this little box, what, three? Six, nine, that's 11 mythics for box one. Like in a 12 pack box, that seems really good. Again, like, I mean, for a 200, I mean, even if the price of this thing, I know it's it's the price of this product has gone up since actually release date, which is kind of strange to say. Uh, but even, even at like 230 with taxes and shipping online for this box right now, like it just, it doesn't feel like a bad deal, but it feels like people are just, they don't seem excited. Like, the product's doing fine, and it's not like the product's bombing and people aren't happy with it, but it, it, I don't feel that crazy... Oh my god, that framework. Yeah, Tessa, wow. Gorgeous. But I don't, I'm not getting that vibe from you all and patrons and people about the sheer amount of, like, how do I say it? Like, the excitement. Like, with, like, Lord of the Rings, like, people are genuinely, like, counting the days flipping level excited. Does that make sense? So it's interesting how you can feel the difference on these things. Fairy Mastermind. Hey, there we go. A little Strixhaven Mystical Archive action. Haven't seen you yet. And that's the... Okay, that looks really good with that foiling. Kind of a soft, swirly kind of in the force there. So sometimes, like I said, it looks really cool. But anyways, so as far as the singles and prices go, obviously now people are asking, okay, well, if it's in standard longer, if the rotation, and do you think this means more or less? See, these are all things that I think Wizards just... I think when Wizards makes those announcements, Will Tree... I think the goal is for them to almost just spark conversation. That is a wild looking piece of art. And of course, that's, I never did this get to see the uh, the neon ink from Kamigawa. We did a lot of collector box. I never got the pool one, man. I heard that it's a neat, like, textured kind of overlay feel to it. I never got to see that. So, I, you know, I don't know. I feel like the whole objective of the Wizards announcement was literally seeing double was just to get people to chatter about it. I think at the end of the day, I don't think they're really expecting a major difference. Beautiful, beautiful, the infamous Thalia there. So, box two, by the way, uh, unless I'm missing cards, um, we're only at one Mythic, Franklin. 
So box two is definitely a lot softer starting off with as far as mythic pull rates go. All right, rune eyes, Stuart. All right, all right, bright palm, soul awakener, a nice little, uh, I always want to say kitty cat, but the fox shaman. And ending box this pack with an infamous corpse burn. God, there's a lot going on with that framework. Like, this card almost looks too busy. There's too many things going on. The details of the artwork with the details of the framework. But anyways, as we as I get done cracking these packs, we'll kind of chat for a minute on all this stuff going on. Ooh, beautiful Dina there. That's a gorgeous looking card. And Elish Norn for the non-foil. You know, I know a lot of people like this type of thing. But still, the black and white simple, it just it's not doing it for me on the artwork. I'm not a huge fan of it. Um, I like a little bit more detail. I'm not a big fan of that monochrome type of thing on here. And last two cards, we got the nice little god card, or I'm sorry, Elder Giant Dog. And of course, Wellspring on there. Um, it, I, I, you know, I, I feel like sometimes Wizards is trying to do so many versions and variants to try to make it so that every single person who opens a pack will appeal to a specific thing. You know, one of those things like you try to please everyone, no one's happy. Nice little sword there. Again, I don't even know if the swords today are really that sought after. I don't even know if people are that excited. A lot of Theros cards in this pack. We got a nice Raptor. And yeah, that is a cool looking card. Look at that collector. Look at that artwork. See, now that's how the hollowing kind of just highlights it. That's a beautiful, beautiful card. But that's how I feel. I feel like sometimes it's just, it's overdone just trying to get people, I don't know how I say it, trying to appeal to everybody, but at the same time you alienate a lot of people. I don't know. Liliana's Talent. It's a cute little piece of art there. Faithful. The old Hedron Glinder from Zendikar. And we got another, uh, the old Senor Edificer. Nice little rare Kaladesh framework there. See, that's, we're in, a, we're in a weird point. And that's what kind of my speech was going to be when we finish these last few packs here. Uh, Franklin, box two does not feel nearly as good. I just want to lay that out there. Worm, we got Blessed by Sun, we got Fugitive, Butcher, and hey, all right. Well, at least we got a nice little myth here, a little Elish Norn. The Grand Cinnabit. So at least, uh, well, three, six, that's still eight Mythics. Well, never mind. I could be wrong here. We could jump right to the same as the other box, which was around 11 Mythics, but I don't know. Box two just feels weaker. Gorgeous carry Zev. Nice little unrest. Another Master Smith. Oh, isn't that crazy? The exact same card. That's how different the exact same card can look and feel in a Wellspring. I love the art, though. The coloring on that is wild. All right, so last two packs of this. Let's just go ahead and finish this up before I start rambling with you. I'm hoping we get some other crazy multiverse something something. All right, shadows, hoofbeats, another hedron grinder, another he. That's so weird how the duplication when they track printed these things. How many packs do that? Shattered spire, beautiful. Squee. Like you guys think it's intentional sometimes, or are they just feeding these sheets into the printers in different slots and they don't really check? Do they? I mean, how do they not notice certain things have so many? Duplicate, wow, that is wild looking. So this is an interesting, so this is a monochrome, more black and white styled thing, but it's like a hand-drawn, pencil-y sketch look. That's kind of fascinating. In, in Infernal Sovereign, nice giant old mean-ass demon there with a nice little Strixhaven mystical. Some uh, glass and ending on a tear. See, I don't know, the sketch black and white looks a little bit better. The foiling on that is uh, a little bit more highlighted. But anyways... Franklin, thanks for being a very kind patron. I know box two ended up with what the same three, six, nine, uh, ten mythics. Three, six, yeah, a little about the same mythics. Ten and eleven each box. Box two still felt a little weaker. Maybe it was the type of mythics we pulled. I'm not really sure on there. You guys can beat me up if I'm wrong, but my my overall thought process right now, and I know the views are low, people aren't excited. That's another indicator. You can always tell what's going on in the market, how much drama there is, and how excited people are, and you can always get a good vibe. When you kind of, when I make these videos, you can see the spikes of views from non-subscribers. You can see the comments and how emotional and how dramatic the responses are. You, you can get a feel for the market. And right now, people don't seem, they don't seem super excited about the card world or magic or anything. Particularly probably magic. Uh, Pokemon's always constant, even though, even though Scarlet and Violet's actually been pretty weak so far. Um, Flesh and Blood's been really strong. Weiss has come back pretty good. The Metazoo Navid has been a huge game changer for Metazoo. But Magic just feels very blah. Like, the products don't feel bad, but it, is it because we've seen so many versions of so many things now? We're all just kind of like, that looks cool. That's neat. Oh, look, 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 look at Mirror. Oh, the mirrors are cool looking. Everything's cool. I don't know. 
I don't know if this is a result of dilution and being desensitized for the last 12 to 24 months of extreme variants and products. Like, you know, this, I mean, these cards, like when you lay these cards out, like look at this. Like when you lay this stuff out for Magic now, like this looks like we opened 10 different types of products. It doesn't even look like we opened one set. Like when you look at the cards on the table, it doesn't even look, we, it looks like we did almost like a, what do they call it, a chaos draft? Where we open random packs through Magic's history. Like, that's what the cards on the table look like. And I'm not sure if Wizards, or I'm not sure, I don't know if they care about that kind of, like, it doesn't feel like there's flow and consistency, like, back in the day. And I'm not sure what they're going for on this. So that, that's, you know, without rambling too long in this video, I just don't know, again, what that means moving forward in, all, in the next 5-10 years. You know, do they continue to make it more crazier and go to 20 variants? See, I don't know. Or do they realize that, well, this is stupid. Why are we spending money on extra art and versions? And why don't we just streamline things? Why are we doing this? Nobody seems to care. See, I, I don't know. And these are, these are the question marks that are going to impact a lot of things. Yeah, that's where I stand right now. So it's a very awkward purgatory in between market right now. Nothing's crashing and burning, but nothing's really booming. At least in the magic world, some other things are. But in the magic world, it just we're just kind of here. It's kind of strange. It's been a long time since I've seen a market like this. So have a beautiful day, folks.